The blood atonement is useless without this. Hmm. Should be an interesting study today. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. You can turn in your King James Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Um, I'm going to show you something rather telling here. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. A lot of people believe in vain. Gnosticism. Uh, for, I de for I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Uh, there's a wicked bunch of heretics out there and led by a cult leader named Robert Breaker who has a suicidal Jesus. I proved that in one of my recent live streams. And his suicidal Jesus killed himself and shed his own blood. You can watch the video. That's what he teaches. And um, you just have faith in the blood. Uh, that's the gospel. Faith in the blood. Put your faith in the blood of Jesus that he shed on the cross. That's not what our text says there. Death, burial, and resurrection. Okay, you say, well, yes, but the blood, he shed all of his blood, and that's what made him die. Not quite. Um, John 19, we'll go there. When Jesus, he dropped every, you know, he, he shed his blood, every drop of blood was out of his body, and then he died, and then he... You know, it was the blood that was what the what saved and whatever else. Um, and believe me, I'm not I'm not against the blood atonement. I teach the blood atonement. But what I'm saying is these people that that hyper concentrate on one aspect of what Jesus Christ did, and then they say that's salvation. Focus your salvation on that one thing. When the Bible doesn't teach that, let me show you this thing here. Did Jesus drop? Did did he get rid of all of his blood and then he died? John chapter 19, verse 30. Let's start there. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished, and he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Jesus died. Okay, that's what it means when he gave up the ghost there. The Jews therefore, because it was the preparation that the bodies should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath day was an high day, besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Then came the soldiers and brake the legs of the first and of the other which was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they brake not his legs. There's no question, right? He's already dead. He gave up the ghost. The soldiers look and say, yeah, okay, he's dead. Did he shed all of his blood yet? Verse 34, but, when, but one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith came there out blood and water. So there was still blood in his body when he died. So he died. It's not that he shed all of his blood and then he died. No, he shed his blood for the remission of sins. Yes, that's true. He shed his blood to wash away our sins, to forgive us of our sins. Yes, that's true. I'm not denying the blood atonement. But what I'm saying is, and make an overemphasis on it, and say that 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4, death, burial, and resurrection, well, that's what all that's mentioned. There's no blood mentioned. They say, well, the blood was what caused the death. That's not true. Okay? Primarily, yes, he lost his blood, and that's what he died from, but there was also asphyxiation. There was a whole bunch of other things. Dying on a cross, you know, yeah, there's a, a bunch of ways that you're going to die there. It's terrible. It's a horrible way to die. You know, you basically, you know, almost drowned, essentially, because you can't breathe correctly. You're hanging there and whatever. It's a terrible, horrible way to die. The blood was shed, the picture of it all through the Old Testament with the animal sacrifices, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. I'm not denying the blood. But what I'm saying is when you put an overemphasis on it and you forget all the rest, that's where heresy comes in. And that's what the satanic people teach particularly Robert Breaker, being a Satanist that he is, a minister of Satan. He gets people off from understanding what the gospel is. The gospel is death, burial, resurrection. All right? Now, here's the interesting thing about this. Jesus Christ died. He was buried, and he rose again the third day. That's three different things. Death, burial, resurrection. And here's the funny thing. 
Not funny, but here's the interesting thing. If you want to be saved, you have to do the same thing. What? You, you're saying that we have to do this works or whatever? No. True salvation, you will die, you'll be buried, and you'll rise again. Let me show you. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. In the Pauline epistles, written to a Christian, you can't duck it unless you're hyper-focused on the blood. Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 6. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Dead to sin? Mm -hmm. Did you know when you get saved that your old man dies? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Huh. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. Death. Burial. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. If any man be in Christ, it's a conditional clause, if... If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. One of the most important things in the entire New Testament. You must be born again. You have to become a new creature in Christ Jesus. There has to be a change in your life when you get saved. Duh. It's not that hard to figure this stuff out. But when you get these stinking heretics, ministers of Satan, they'll get you to hyper-focus on one part of what happened on the cross, and then they'll say, that's salvation. And they will totally miss the thing of Jesus died, was buried, and he rose from the dead. And you have to go through the same thing supernaturally. In a spiritual sense, I'm not Brian Denlinger anymore that was born, that was a sinner all those years. Brian Denlinger died when he was 26 years old. Thinking about it from different you know, different times when I was doing videos and things, I think I was saying 25 for a while. Got to rethinking about the you know, the time frame of it. No, no, that would have been 2001. Yeah, it would have been 26. Forgive me, my brain sometimes doesn't work all that great. Uh, 26 years old, Brian Denlinger died. And he was buried. Had a funeral service for him. <laughs> uh, understand what I'm saying there. He died. He was buried. Who's this? Uh, this is a new man here. Um, a lot of people used to like that old Brian Denlinger. People don't like this one. This is a, the new man that came up. Well, I've never experienced anything, anything like that. Well, then you didn't get saved. God didn't save you. Okay? It's not my own doing, by the way. That's not it at all. A lot of people, again, they, they accuse me of being a heretic. Old Denlinger's lordship, salvation, and all this other st stupid nonsense. Um... If I was teaching it was my own righteousness, then yeah, that would be a problem. But it's Jesus Christ's righteousness that has been that's been imputed to me. And now I walk as a new creature in Christ Jesus. If you'd have told me I was going to be a preacher someday back as a lost man before that man died, I'd have laughed at you. I said, What? You know, no, no. I have um, I'm a certified motorcycle repair technician, you know, became a, wanted to become a motorcycle mechanic, get into racing and I was getting into logging and all kinds of other stuff. Preacher? Yeah. But here I am. Hmm. Verse 5. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall, also, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. It's always boggled my mind how people can fight the thing of a new life in Christ Jesus. I understand I'm a sinner and Jesus had to die for my sins and I accept his death and burial and resurrection there to pay for my sins, but then I get to continue in my sins without any kind of conviction or grief or, hey, this is wrong. Or... It boggles my mind. You know, you come before the judge and the judge says, hey, you were speeding there and 
and you hurt a couple of people, you knocked into a couple of vehicles and things, and, and uh, I'm really sorry, sir. I, I'm so sorry, and, and I know I'm guilty and everything else. Okay, we're going to let you go this time. Oh, thank you, sir. And you go out and you get in your car and you take off down the road going 120 miles an hour, slamming into things that... Uh, no. See? Oh, well, let's just make the arguments and the counter-arguments. Well, what about this? What about... If, hey, look, if you want to pretend that you're a Christian and you want to live in sin, all sin being negative, all sin will destroy you, then go ahead. Go ahead. But don't come around here. Don't come around this channel and try to post your satanic nonsense in the comments section because I'll get rid of you. Okay? See, I'm not like Robert Breaker. I'm not just trying to grow my subscriber count so I can make more monetized money. All right? You see the difference there? I hope you do. Let me show you another one, an interesting one. Revelation chapter 11. Revelation chapter 11. Begin in uh, verse 7. Talking about the two witnesses, Moses and Elijah. Beyond a shadow of a doubt, that's who it is. I proved it in other studies. Um, Revelation chapter 11, verse 7. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Jerusalem, in other words. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and in half, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another, because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. Um, and after three days and in half the spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. Uh, and verse 12, And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemy, enemies beheld them. So what do we see? Death. No burial. <laughs> they were just left out there on the street. But resurrection. Hmm. Kind of an interesting thing. Like a saint in the time of Jacob's trouble, there's a thing of they missed the burial part. I don't know, there's maybe some typology there and some symbology and whatever else. It's kind of fascinating. But again, you see the thing of death. They're not buried, but they resurrect. Huh. You see, um, what separates Jesus Christ from Muhammad? Did Muhammad shed some blood at some point in time? Probably. Um, did he get buried? Yeah. Did he resurrect? Did he come up from the dead? No. What about Buddha? No idea if he ever shed any blood. Did he die? Yes. Did he come up from the dead? No. How about any of the popes? No. They didn't come up from the dead. Get down through all the cult leaders that have ever lived. They die, they're buried, they don't come up. So when you get born again, your life will show that things in a spiritual sense that you die. The old man dies buried. You don't keep them around. You don't hang out with your old self. Okay. I mean, it's, you have to keep it down. You have to say, okay, don't let that old zombie come up out of the ground there and start, you know, walking around, you know, doing the sins that it, you know, used to do in the past. You have to put down the old man, crucify the old man and things and keep that down, crucify the flesh. I'm saying you have to do that. But my point is you become a new creature in Christ Jesus. There's a spiritual death, burial, resurrection when you get saved. That's there. But you see, if you make salvation all about the blood atonement, how do you spiritualize that? You can't say, well, in a, in a strange sort of way, we kind of shed our blood and whatever. Our blood doesn't mean anything. Our blood's corruptible. You see how somebody can mess you up? They'll focus on something that's true, the blood atonement, absolutely true. But then they pull you away, and that's all salvation is right there. There's no new beginning. 
There's no new life in Jesus Christ. It's a cheap ripoff is what it is. Now let's go to um, 1 Thessalonians. Let's see here. 1 Thessalonians. Um, Verse, or chapter 4 and verse 13. Okay? 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Other people that have no resurrection as part of their system, they have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. See, we have something different. It isn't just, well, the blood saves, it's to put your faith in the blood and everything else. Uh, the resurrection. The resurrection is where it's all at. Okay? And if you don't have that in there as part of the gospel, death, burial, resurrection, and that you see that in your life, I'm a new man now. I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. Look how the Lord has changed my life. What a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart, the old hymn says. <sighs> It's a beautiful thing. I mean, if all you get when you get saved is just a ticket to heaven when you die, and uh, okay, so congratulations, you're going to heaven when you die, but just can't help you down here. What's the point of coming to the cross? What's the point of coming and saying, God, please save me. I need help here. I'm an alcoholic. I'm a porn addict. I'm a drug user. I'm, a, I'm in all kinds of debt. People hate me and people want to kill me. And you get saved and God not only gives you an eternity in heaven, but he also helps you clean up your life down here. People just don't understand that on purpose. Now let's go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 12. Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. <laughs> Without the resurrection there, your, our preaching is vain. If I can't offer you some, you know, this is salvation, tell you what salvation is, and here's how you can have a brand new life. If there's nothing there, if there's no resurrection spiritually, I mean, in the of course, when we actually get called up to be with the Lord, there's that. But in your life here, we are to walk in newness of life. We're a new creature now. If that's not there, then our preaching's vain. I mean, think, think about this for a minute. You say, oh, this is your... Think about it. If all that preaching is for, if all the gospel is for is to send you to heaven when you die... Well, then what need is there for this is a sin, don't do that, and thou shalt not? And what? What's the point? You want to go to heaven when you die? Well, yeah, I'd like to. Okay. You believe Jesus died for your sins? Yes. Then you're in. Congratulations. Okay, see ya. I have to go now. Uh, oh, I have a problem with alcohol. Where do I go? Oh, um, maybe Alcoholics Anonymous or maybe some kind of thing, or maybe there's a drug that you can take, a prescription drug to, you know, do whatever. Preaching's vain. What's the point? What's the point of having to go and read the Bible and whatever if there's no help for sin? If there's no hope of, of turning from sin and whatever else? Not sinless perfection. I've never taught that. Again, the heretics will lie about me and say, oh, he teaches sinless perfection. I never have. Anybody who says that, they're a liar. But, you know, what's the point of, of our faith if it's just, you know, get out of hell? And that's all. It's vain. It's nonsense. Verse 15. 
Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised, and if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, ye are yet in your sins. Then they which also are then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. And if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. <laughs> That's the difference there. That's why the gospel, the difference between us and others, I should say, that's why the gospel is death, burial, resurrection. It isn't faith in the blood. That's nonsense. Right? Well, I can go back to Romans chapter 3. Yeah, take one verse out of context. Uh, no, it's death, burial, resurrection. You have to believe what Jesus Christ did on the cross. He died. He was buried. He rose again the third day. But it doesn't stop there. You have to look at that thing and say, if I put my faith in that, I'm going to die with him. I'm going to be buried. My old man is going to be buried with him. And I'm going to be resurrected as a new creature in Christ Jesus to walk around on this earth as an ambassador for Jesus Christ. I'm different than those people out there. We think differently. I'm not like one of those people. Well, I think that you're teaching it. Okay, fine. Then get your little out of hell card, you think, and uh, go on living like the devil. Go ahead, see where that gets you. So, um, just something the Lord kind of put into my mind here, and, and I thought about that, and I thought, yeah, you know, because I've been arguing with these heretics for so many years now, and, and uh, oh, it's the blood, it's the blood. Okay, where's the blood at in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1 through 4? Well, it's the death, the death there. Christ died for our sins. Well, that's the blood that he shed. Well, no, actually, because he died before he shed all of his blood completely. So it's more, you know, Christ died for our sins. There's more to it than just him shedding his blood. All right. There was a lot more to it there. So um, the blood atonement is there. That's part of the overall thing of the gospel. You can't remove the blood atonement like John MacArthur tried to do. But my point is, you know, John MacArthur came out with this thing about how the Jesus could have been strangled or whatever. It was about the death. It wasn't about his blood being shed. Well, that's heresy. That's satanic heresy. Again, I've preached against that. But to then focus and hyper-focus on one little part of it, then you have a false gospel. That's the whole thing. And if you don't understand the death, burial, and resurrection in your own life, if you can't look back and say, boy, the way I was before I got saved, wow, what all the Lord has done in my life to clean up so much, you know. Wow, that's amazing uh, what the Lord has done for me. Um, hey, I'd like to tell you people out there what the Lord can do for you as well. It's not just you go to heaven when you die. That's, that's great. But you know what? God can clean up your life right now. So, I wanted to put that thing together there. Just an amazing thing that... Uh, um, how we have something that, that is, separates us from all the other religions out there, all the other cults and whatever else. We have such a great promise from the Lord um, that He can give us a new life. So um, hopefully that's been a blessing to you. I know it was a blessing to me as I studied through that. And again, I'm warning. I'm going to go after these guys, um, these fakers and i will always do that uh, when i see people claiming to be king james bible believing and they're coming out with heresy i have a duty not just to write i have a duty to say that guy's wrong and name names paul did it all throughout the pauline epistles he's naming names alexander the coppersmith and this guy here and that guy there that's what we have to do okay I'm not going to be vague and ambiguous and, oh, well, there's somebody online, you know. I'm not doing that. Um, and it isn't just the thing of, well, I have the guts to, to name names. That's there, but it's more than that. I want to actually warn people about false prophets. That's why I come out and I expose by name. 
and I will show video clips from those people and whatever else. If you don't like that, then, you know, whatever. Don't watch those videos. It doesn't matter to me. But um, I need to warn people. So, uh, I guess we will see everybody in the next video. Um, of course, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for your prayers. And um, stand by the book, brethren. Uh, you are going to get deceived at some point in time. Okay? <laughs> You will find that out. I was deceived many times down through the years. And you just have to go. It's part of the learning process as a Christian. And if you've fallen for Robert Breaker and you thought, hey, that guy really has a good, some good information, he just took his information from Peter Ruckman. Okay. Um, and when Breaker comes out and teaches his own stuff, it gets really heretical and whatever else. Um, and ministers of Satan, they'll do a lot of good teaching, but then they get you on a few little areas. And Robert Breaker, again, don't waste my time with he's your brother in Christ. Robert Breaker's not my brother in Christ. His suicide, Jesus, killed himself, which is what he teaches. Like I said, I proved it in my recent live stream. That's not the Jesus that I worship. Okay? So, um, I guess we'll see in future studies. Please pray and stay close to your Bible. Read it every day. Thank you for watching. King James Video Ministries has been faithfully preaching and teaching from God's Word since 2008. Our YouTube channel has never been monetized, and we do not accept money from the lost world because this would violate the Scriptures. King James Video Ministries is supported by saved brethren in accordance with 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 17 through 18. If you have been blessed by our videos, we would ask that you prayerfully consider supporting this ministry financially. You can donate online by visiting www.kingjamesvideoministries.com or by sending a check or money order to King James Video Ministries, P.O. Box 214, Patton, Maine, 04765. Thank you to all who donate to this ministry, and we pray for the Lord's blessing in your lives.